Do you miss the days of having an old, big, multi-cell mag light? If so, the Sofren SP70 is for you. It's their big new flagship thrower flashlight. It's the largest modern flashlight that I own. It's so big, in fact, that it ships with a shoulder strap. Thanks to Banggood for sending this one to me to take a look at. If you're interested, please make sure you check the link in the description below, because I'm pretty sure I'm gonna have a pretty good discount on this one. So um, if you're interested, make sure you check that for the links. And while we're on reminders, I have Facebook page for the group here. I have uh, social media, Instagram, all those types of things. So if you are not following, please make sure you take the chance and follow. So Sofren doesn't spend any money on packaging. This is literally all it comes in. It's a brown cardboard box that's kind of beat up. The light comes in cardboard that's inside here. Uh, it's got a little bit of foam for protection and bubble wrap, but that's it. Looking at accessories the light comes with here, you get a bag of extras. You get some extra O-rings, an extra button for the silicon cover there. And then you get two split rings for the um, sling here. You get some tubes to convert the light to run on uh, 18650s if you like. And you get the manual, and this is a good manual. Um, it's a little bit small print, but they do a really nice job. It's got uh, good translation. There's really no problems with it. Um, so they do a good job on here. They spend a little bit of money and uh, do a good job. And then here is the sling. It's just a basic nylon uh, webbing. Uh, very basic, not a real fancy sling. And then it's got some uh, attachment points for the light. So Sofren does make a kit version available for the SP70. Um, but I just received the light itself. The kit version includes two 26650 batteries and a basic charger. I know both versions are available on Amazon, but it looks like Banggood's only selling the light only version like I have here. So this light's made from aluminum, uh, T61, 6061, and uh, anodized, nice hard anodizing on here. Quality overall is good. Uh, there's no sharp edges or visible machining marks, and it's a heavyweight light coming in at 864 grams with batteries. The light's large enough here that if I try and set it up, the camera has a hard time focusing. So I'll probably end up taking it apart as we go through here more. So here is the tail and um, it's got a center button here, silicon cover, it's a mechanical button so you can hear it click. On the side here, you've got a um, bigger ring and you can put a lanyard through this pretty easily. If you do want to attach that sling point, it's done here on the anti-roll ring or sling attachment. You've got some areas milled in here for a little bit of grip, nothing too fancy. And on the inside, you've got dual springs and the uh, threads are square cut and mine could use a little bit more grease and they are anodized. On the body tube itself, you've got this anti-roll ring or tactical ring for a light this big, I don't really, I'm not gonna cigar grip it just cause it's so big, but you could. Um, it works better as an anti-roll ring, although it's not quite big enough to do a super good job of that as you can see here. More importantly, this is where you attach your little split ring and uh, then the strap for the uh, whole sling. Knurling here is pretty good. Um, it's got a good grip, it's not too grippy. Um, it's not gonna rip up your hand, but it definitely provides grip. Um, good, they did a good job with that. The body tube does come off. The threads are just like the tail. They're anodized and square cut. On the head side of things here, um, you've got the button. And when I hold this in my hand, it, it's a pretty good position here. I can easily fit it with my thumb. On the back side, they did not uh, mill anything here, which I like, so it, I can wrap my finger around here and then put it on. Just a nice secure fit. This light's big enough if you've got big hands, that won't be a problem. But then you've got milling all along the side of the lamp. Um, this provides some heat sinking and it also lowers the weight of the light itself. And then up front here, this is the front attachment point for the shoulder sling. Again, use one of the split rings put in here and that makes life a lot easier. If we look here at the top, you can see there is a bit of a crenulated bezel here. This lets the lens slit fit down in the light a little bit more for protection. It's just a mineral glass lens, nothing fancy there. You can see the reflector is heavily orange peeled and you can see the LED sits there in the center. 
So this is the first light that I have that's officially too long to measure with my calipers in one try, so I had to improvise a bit. Length was measured at 250 millimeters. Diameter at its largest point in the head is 90 millimeters. Minimum diameter on the body tube was 34 millimeters. I measured the weight with two Keep Power 26650 batteries installed at 864.7 grams, which makes it the heaviest light I've ever tested. That's almost two pounds of flashlight. No wonder this thing comes with a shoulder sling. And the light is IPX67 rated. Now, I don't have any modern lights that are this long to compare it with. Um, and I can't find my Claris XT32 right now. I'm sure it's in my closet somewhere. But it also uses the two 18650 batteries, so it, it's comparably long, but not doesn't have as big a head here. So instead, my stand-in kind of comparison here is the Astrolux FTO3 that I looked at last week. You can see it just uses one 26650 battery, and it's just not as big. Um, the sofa is just huge. Um, head size, again, these are almost too big to get in frame, so it's hard to tell here. Maybe I can do it like this. Um, but you can see just how much room there is. The sofa is just so much bigger than really any other flashlight that uh, I can compare it to. I have a picture here against a 50 caliber uh, rifle round, and it makes it look small. Okay, I've got the Sofren SP70 with me here today. This light works in a lot of different modes. We'll just focus on a few here. If we pan down, we can see this is eco mode, about 60 lumens. And does a nice job with the dirt in front of me here. This is in using a Cree XHP 70.2 LED and 6000 Kelvin. If I bump up, I've got low at 400 lumens. Uh, 400 lumens, this doesn't throw quite as far as you'd think it would. Bumping up again, we've got medium at 1200 lumens. And you can see this is a bigger spot. Again, it throws off to my edges of my property here pretty well. This is high at 3000 lumens. Big nice spot. And this is turbo at 5500 lumens. Big hot spot here. Does a real nice job of, this is a thrower, but it really casts a pretty wide beam. It catches that uh, building down there. That is at least car size, if not bigger, it's a container. We look back at the city, look at my dirt pile, can look up at the cell tower here. Pretty, pretty easy to spot. And looking down range here, I need more range here. This light is just too powerful. Now this isn't the most focused thrower beam we've seen, but it's really a not pretty nice beam. It does have a harder cutoff as you can see there and see how far away it is roughly. This does throw more light in the spill than some of the other throwers we have, so it's kind of a middle ground there. You can see back here at the next property over. You can see the next dirt pile over there. Really a fun little light. And by little, I mean it's huge. So here is the head just off, and uh, Sofren's using a Cree XHP 70.2 LED, and no tint did is given on this LED, but uh, it's a fairly neutral cool white. It's got an unusual, it's got the usual XHP 70.2 faults here, um, but in my example, they're not so bad. Um, the Cree Rainbow just isn't as bad, and the uh, banding you see around the outside, um, Sofren's done a pretty decent job to control that, it seems like. It's a good admitter in this choice just because it has so much output and throw. That brings me to the beam pattern here. While it's a good thrower, it's not as tight as beam as I was expecting. The hot spot is pretty good size and doesn't have the usual hard edges uh, you'd sit, expect in a lot of throwers. In my night shots, you saw that, that bigger beam and even larger spill. So for enlist the following outputs for group one. Moon is two lumens, eco is 60 lumens, low is 400 lumens, medium is 1200 lumens, high is 3000 lumens, turbo is 5500 lumens, and beacon is a thousand lumens. And although this light can run on 18650s for runtime, 
uh, and performance benefits, I'd recommend running a 26650 battery instead. You, um, I saw about nine amps of draw in the back, so you don't need anything too fancy, but uh, you get a lot more runtime out of your larger 26650 batteries. In my graphs below here, you can see the difference between using 18650s and 26650 batteries. Turbo is, would be, is kind of a letdown here because it only lasts for about three minutes while decreasing in output. The light declines over 30 minutes to around 70% relative output, which isn't too bad when you're on that high output. Um, but at that point, we see a large decline to about 30% relative output for the next hour. From here, we see small declines and very low outputs for another 130 minutes for a total runtime of 240 minutes on the two 26650 batteries. On the two 18650s, total runtime was similar, but you only got about 50 minutes of really effective light. Low voltage protection kicks in here. And I did notice the cells discharge a little bit unevenly. So if I was using this light a lot I, between recharges, I would kind of swap them around once your batteries are full again. Not a huge deal, but it just would uh, help with wear and tear on your batteries a little bit. So this light's got two UI modes. By default, it comes in a more conventional step interface by default, and it's also capable of a ramping UI. I did my testing on the default UI. It's got six mode groups. So I'm gonna turn it on from the tail cap here, and it's in low. Then you can just press and hold, and it cycles through. Very easy. Um, it's got memory, so I can have it here on, let's say, I think that's uh, medium. I can turn it off, turn it back on. There you go. I can double click to get to uh, turbo. And uh, there you go. And it does got that XHV 70.2 donut you might be able to see in there. As I mentioned before, the mechanical switch does work as momentary if you want. And you can uh, turn this light in kind of a run by or standby mode. So it's on and you press it off so the emitter's off. Lights in standby now, you get this green indicator, it tells your battery status. It turns on for about five seconds. Uh, when it's green, it's you're good. When it's orange, you're kind of in a medium battery life. When it's red, it's time to recharge. This light has memory and lockout modes as well. Overall, this is a pretty simple interface and pretty intuitive. There's not a whole lot going on. And I do like they made beacon mode a separate mode, not part of the main mode. So for me, the pros are the thermals are pretty well controlled for as many lumens as we see here. It doesn't get too hot to the touch. It's even probably conservative for my tastes. I prefer the uh, 5500 turbo lumen output to run a little bit longer. And I think they could do this if they were just a little, didn't care quite as much about thermals. That said, active thermal control would be nice over a time step down, but that's more difficult to do at this price point. That said, it's got huge output of 5,500 lumens and a uh, good throw at 687 meters. This isn't your longest distance thrower, but uh, it's a pretty wide beam, so it's, that's kind of nice as well. And I like that beacon isn't part of the main mode groups. For me, the cons are its size. It's just really big and it's appropriately heavy you're not gonna be EDC in this light in your pants pocket. Um, that big head does make me a little bit worried about damaging the glass from any impacts. And it's running that XHP 70.2 LED, so it's got those normal characteristics, the donut, some Cree rainbow, things like that. So my conclusion is if you miss the days of having that big three or four cell D mag light and uh, really some heft to a flashlight, and you're in the market for a high Lumen long distance thrower, the Sofren SP70 is a good option and it's fairly affordable as well. That said, if you don't want quite as much heft, um, there are alternatives to this light that throw just as well, if not better. Everything about this light is big from its throw, lumen output, spill, and gross weight, except its price. It's pretty affordable, especially with the coupon that I'll have in the description. Sofren has done a good job in the past of listening to enthusiasts turning out better and better lights. It's quickly becoming one of my favorite brands for budget options to recommend. And their SP70 is their best large format thrower to date. As always guys, thanks for watching these videos. Um, if you're interested, please make sure you click that link. Even if you're not interested, click that link as it helps me to help this channel and continue to make videos like this. If you've got any questions, 
Um, make sure you leave them in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer them. And make sure you're subscribed so you'll catch the next review pretty soon. Thanks.